Canadian real estate prices are about to fall a whole lot lower. And Oxford Economics thinks that the worst case scenario is a return to 2014 pricing. And in my market of Surrey, BC, that means that the average detached home will be worth as little as $637,600 by Q4 of 2024. And I'm going to cover all of that after I ask you to take care of the worst case scenario of not being subscribed to this channel. And if you own a property here in my market of Surrey or anywhere in the Fraser Valley and you want to sell before the bottom inevitably falls out, well, go ahead and book a selling consultation with me right now using the link in the description below. And since we're discussing real estate prices of Surrey today, and the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board just released their most recent stats package. That makes this the Surrey Report. And it would not be the Surrey Report without my amazing team updating you on the latest benchmark pricing in the city. Looking at our detached market, we had 82 sales in the month of January. That is a 68% decrease from the 255 sales for the same period last year. Our benchmark price is $1,493,100. That is down 1.1% month over month and down 14.5% year over year. There were 93 townhouse sales in January of 2023 compared to 122 of January 2022. And the benchmark price is 796,100 which is a reduction of 2% month over month and 11.4% reduction year over year. Duke, say hello. And in condos, benchmark price is 515,000. Now that's a 5.3% decrease year over year, but it's a 2.5% increase month over month. All right, thanks team. And you too can thank my amazing team members, Chanani, Eric, and Mary Lou by clicking the like button to show them how much more you like them than me. And now on to this two part video. One, starting with a review of the always negative better dwelling and this article that they recently published. And it is titled Canadian real estate prices to fall lower. Worst case scenario is a return to 2014 pricing. All right, obviously Canadian real estate prices are still falling and the apparent prominent, who hasn't often been right, but hey, neither am I, Oxford Economics is updating its housing outlook. Obviously, I don't think this is a shock to anyone. We are projecting that house prices will fall further. They say, though, that Canada is roughly only about halfway through its current correction. And of course, as the title suggests, if things get really bad, and to their credit here, they're saying really, really bad, the firm warns that house prices could fall as low as the pricing as if we were going back in time to 2014. It goes on to say that obviously prices are falling, and we continue to expect that to happen for the near term anyway, who knows how long that might actually continue. The firm baseline scenario forecast sees home prices falling 30% in total. Now, I want you to remember that number because 30% in total is going to for sure be nationwide is what they're saying here, but I'm going to then compare it in the second part of this video to what's going on here in my market of Surrey. Then they go on to say that leaves us just about halfway at the moment with another 17% to go. If this occurs, the housing would just touch the top of the affordability range, apparently. Though, here's very interesting, keep this in mind because it's a national report, they still warn that Toronto and Vancouver would remain unobtainable for most of the population. And then they obviously break down that you're going to have some areas that fall much more than others. Areas like Hamilton, minus 34%, apparently. And again, keep these in mind. Uh, areas like Cambridge, Waterloo, minus 33%. While areas like Regina and Calgary, they're only projecting an 11 percent decline. Now, here's the part I like next. They actually do a baseline of different possibilities of 
what the market is going to do. And I'm going to show you that because it's going to be extremely important in reviewing, obviously, the extremely negative side of things, which is reflected in the title of this article. So let's keep going down and you're going to see this is the graph I love here. So this is their projection. Now, it's a little hard to read. The first metric here starts, I believe it looks like Q3 of 2018. So that means we are actually one kind of line ahead here from where the current line is. And now they're projecting what the best and worst case scenarios are. So this green line here is what they're calling the moderate upside. Let me see if I can scale in on this picture here. For, oh, that works perfect. Just click on it. Steve, it's the internet. It knows how to do everything. So this green line here uh, is the moderate, it says upside. I don't see the severe upside because they do have a severe downside. They have a baseline. I'm assuming baseline, maybe we should read the article further, but I'm assuming baseline is in regards to what is probably most likely to happen. And then the moderate downside and the severe downside. Now, this is what I find most interesting. In, I'm going to say, one, two, three of their models, they have the market balancing out by Q3 of this year and then going up again. And only their worst case severe downside has the market going into Q4 of next year before it also then starts to recover. Now, obviously, again, all the way up here behind my fat head, you'll see 800,000, well, you won't see it, it's behind my head, $800,000 as being around where pricing was at the peak nationwide, mind you, this is nationwide, and they can see that pricing coming back down to the $400,000 mark. However, even their moderate downside and their baseline only have that number dropping a little bit further than where it is today with recovery at the end of this year. Kind of wish they covered in the story a little bit more. Well, maybe I should keep reading, Steve, but I kind of wish they covered this moderate upside a little bit more in the story. Maybe they do. Let's get back into it. Yeah, they do. Steve, I spoke too soon. I was looking at charts for pictures first, then read later. That's been my whole life. A baseline scenario is the most probable. So they're even suggesting right now that by let's call it Q3 of this year is the bottom of the market. Even the most negative people right now, which seems to be Better Dwelling and Oxford Economics seem to think that Q3 this year is the most likely bottom of the market. But obviously they say they must look at many different possible outcomes or scenarios. So the moderate upside scenario is the firm's view of what happens without a recession. So whether or not we're in a recession, whether or not we've been in a recession, whether or not we're going into a recession, uh, highly debated topics for sure. Inflation subsides very quickly in their upside. Real incomes get a boost, apparently, which obviously probably is not going to happen. And GDP rises by 0.4% in 2023. In this scenario, home prices fall 27% from peak to trough. So keep that again in mind, 27% from peak to trough. The moderate downside scenario, a decline in home prices extend further into the economy. I, Steve, you should probably read the whole article before you keep commenting. Household wealth and consumer confidence suffers, which I think it's already doing. GDP contracts by 3.3%. No sign of that happening yet that I can tell, but I am not any sort of an economist. And home prices fall 34%. Okay, so at this point, they're saying that 34% is the moderate downside. And that would have to take much worse economic conditions in order to see house prices with that kind of drop. Okay, so the worst case scenario is what they call the severe downside it involves a shock to the financial system of yet we have not seen. Could there be one coming? Absolutely. Um, it is usually the thing you don't see coming that does tank the market or maybe increase the market like we saw with the pandemic. GDP would have to contract 9.9%. Now, I don't I don't know if there is a time when GDP has contracted 9.9%. I don't know. I'm not an economist, but that would be an interesting number to look at. And in this scenario, okay, so this is where they're talking about much more than a 30% downturn. In this scenario, house prices could collapse 48% and fall back to price levels 
of 2014. Then they go on to say, well, no matter what, you're probably going to see double digit house price decreases, which in my market, we've already seen. So the question is, does that continue? And then does it start to recover at the time of which they are projecting in three of their four models as soon as about six to eight months from now? And then it goes on to talk about the particular situation. One line I like here, when high home prices price young adults out of the city, they move to other places with greater opportunity. And personally, I don't think that's a bad thing. So now, obviously, that headline was written and story was written to shock everyone out there. And even they don't believe that that is the most likely outcome. But they're looking for clicks. And well, this is also an article that talks about the entire Canadian market as a whole. And this channel and my business have a finer focus on the Surrey and Fraser Valley market, as that is the area that I service as a real estate professional. So let's dive into those numbers for a minute, because I don't think this article is even close to what is happening in the city of Surrey. First off, looking at just the general Fraser Valley snapshot here, we are seeing that, yes, detached homes are actually down over the 13 to 14% that was quoted in the article already and are already down 17% year over year. Townhouses way less than that. And condos are doing quite well right now with a downturn of only 5.9%. So you do have to consider what type of asset class you are in when you're looking at these numbers. And they did say that we're going to see another double digit decrease no matter what happens. And it should be about 30% from peak to trough. However, I want to hop into the local stats here for the city of Surrey. Now, detached is the blue line that you're looking at on the screen. The orange line is actually all property types combined. The green line, townhouses, and the red line is apartments. Now, from the peak of the market that what I can tell at 1.25 as an overall down currently today to 995 across the entire city that is already a 21 percent decrease so that's showing us that areas like surrey are having a tougher time than for instance the city of vancouver and burnaby that are doing much better at this time but not nearly as bad of a time that's going on out in areas like mission where well, at one point, house prices were as high as $1.3 million, and right now, they're under 900 k But I do also want to scale out here for a second, because the article says that the worst-case scenario is a return of like 48% downside all the way back to 2014 pricing. And if I look at 2014 pricing in the city of Surrey, well, we're going to need a detached house to go down to $637,000, which I personally find extremely unlikely. And then all property types would have to come back to a total of 488,000. So in order to return to those levels, like I said, 637,000 dollars from today's current 1.493 we're talking about a 58 percent drop or so and from the peak you would have to see a 66 percent drop or more but something really really interesting has started to happen in some markets and i want to show you exactly what that is first of all for sure sales are at really 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 low numbers and new listings are barely starting to come back on, but thankfully they are starting to come back around. Active listings, however, as a total, meaning there are properties selling or there are properties canceling and relisting coming back on as new listings, but active listings currently on the market are actually still decreasing. And this is actually a trend that we're seeing in some areas. And I want you to kind of pay really close attention to this in the condo market we've actually seen prices start to come back. We've gone from 502,000 last month to 515 this month. So there is a possibility that the condo or the more affordable marketplace, maybe even the investors, well, there's a possibility, and I do think this is a small possibility, that the market is showing signs of being very close to the bottom on the bottom end of the market. So there you go. 
let me know what you think down below in the comments and if we have seen the majority of the downside already or if you agree with Oxford Economics worst case scenario and if you think we will soon return to prices of a decade ago which again would actually symbolize something like a 57 or 58 percent price drop from today's market and 66 percent price drop from the peak in Surrey Detached and I'm going to go on the record here as saying I believe and I think Oxford Economics believes that's very highly unlikely. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, clicking the like button, and we'll see you in a couple of days.